is it that we feel that hard times will never leave us? That we're in, we're in the midst of a bad hour, that it feels like it will be a forever hour. When we're in the midst of a bad week or even a bad month, that it will never go away. You'll never turn a corner. Why? That regardless if it's a day, a week, or a month, it feels just as hard, just as heavy, just as endless. To be honest, I don't know when we started to form that idea, when we started to give pain so much power and we started to give fear so much credit. It's funny, when we're having a really good day, a really good time, in the back of our minds, we quietly know that that time will pass. You know, if you're going to a big party or if you're going to a fun event or you're just meeting a friend that you love for coffee, you know there's an end to it and you're at peace with that. You understand you're there. You understand you won't be there forever. And we let go and we move on and we, and we hang on for our next fun time. But when we're in a bad time, when we're in a hard time, a sad time, an exhausted time, we assume it will be forever. We deny its ability to pass us. And I want you to think of this visual. Think about a, the sun coming through your window. And I, I grew up having cats. I don't know if any of you do, but you would never notice how like the sun always, that the cat, sorry, always finds the sun and the cat will sleep in the sun. But is this, you know, the, the sun kind of moves to the sky, so does that sunny spot on the floor. And you'll see the cat get up, walk over, and sleep again. Get up, walk over, and sleep again. And at one point when the, you know, the floor was in brightness and lightness, it's then in the shadow. And we learn a great lesson from the cat because we understand the time comes and goes, whichever we're in, right, bright or dark, and you just keep walking towards the light. You just keep putting yourself in those positions where you can restore your happiness because you've changed how you're approaching it and, and quite literally, actionably moving toward it. And so what I want you to do, if you are in the midst of a time where you're really feeling the weight, the hardness, the intensity of these days, whatever loss you're feeling, whatever departure, whatever pain, whatever betrayal, I want you to try to normalize the way good comes and goes and allow difficulty to rise and fall in the same way. I want you to normalize these difficult times. I want you to greet them. I want you to see them for the information that they are and then go ahead and repeat your day. Normalize, greet, repeat. Normalize, greet, repeat. It's a wonderful mantra for all occasion, but especially when we're kind of feeling in that rut of difficulty. It's almost like we are rerouting our energy. We are aware of it but we're not giving over to it. I had a workout recently where I came in with a bad attitude and I felt like everything was going wrong. I was clumsy in the gym. I kept dropping things. My shoelace kept, shoelace kept untying. I picked a rowing machine that was really gritty. I was like, oh, nothing's going my way. And I was at the brink of just giving over to it, be like, I'm not going to even do this workout. I'm just going to quit these things. I don't have the right shoes for this. This rower sucked. And I go, you know what? You're not going to give over. You're going to stay right here. You're going to greet this weird feeling, this, this edge that you're carrying into this gym today. And you're going to show yourself that you don't need to take it with you when you leave. It's almost taking this negative energy, this edge, and, and 
moving it into productivity. I took that situation where I had every reason to let it roll and bother me and build. And I said, oh, I'm going to stay on the crappy rower. I'm going to work out with my shoe untied. I'm going <laughs> to imperfectly move through this workout. And I'm going to show you myself that I don't need my handheld, that I don't need to quit, that I don't need to have the bad attitude take over my day because I'm giving it the power that it doesn't deserve. And I'm instead going to be productive and I'm going to show myself who I am. I'm going to show myself that regardless of what's around me, I can go forward. And I don't have to be perfect and I don't have to be smiling all the time, but I can find a path that doesn't allow me to pour into that cycle. And that's really where I want to catch you today. If you're in that cycle where everything's going wrong and you're like, well, it's just going to stay wrong. Well, why do I try? Well, why make the effort? It's going to go south anyways. Don't give over. Give in to productivity. Normalize the weird feeling. Normalize the icky belly and say, ah, I remember you. What are you trying to tell me? And also, I get excited now. What can I show myself about my ability today? What can I show myself about my mental and emotional and spiritual strength? I've spent a lot of time in my life building the body, building this oak tree you see before you. <laughs> and yet my mind has been the weakest part of it all because I thought, well, if I just do the physical work, it will be enough. But in fact, it's my mind that's kept leading me down the dark paths because I kept giving over and practicing these reps on, I don't want to, um, nor, um, generalize it to like mental toughness, find those mental reps where you're ready to pull out. You're ready to give up. You're ready to just like, it's Wednesday. I've already fucked the week. I'm just, I want to start it. You know, whatever that feeling is, whatever that moment is for you. And we all have one. I want you to look for it. I want you to capture it. And I want you to smile, right? Normalize, greet it, welcome that opportunity to show you who you really are and not the story that you've been replaying. And here's the next big hit. Often the story that we're replaying is a lie that we tell ourselves so we don't have to do the harder work, which is really looking at ourselves and looking where we need to improve. Looking at where we've fallen short. Because the hardest thing about that is being able to acknowledge where you fell short, not just for someone else, but for yourself, and forgiving yourself for those mistakes. Great quote by Maya Angela: when you know better, you do better. And that's the beauty of why we're learning. That's why I want you in that cycle. Because I have made a lot of mistakes. I have wronged a lot of people. I've wronged myself so much. I've kept myself buried under negativity for a long time. And when I started to forgive myself for those mistakes, because I'm learning. I'm able to do better going forward. And I realize I'm not those things. I'm these things. And I'm pretty darn strong, not just in the body, but in my mind and in my mindset. So if you're in it, remember, normalize that hard days are going to come. Normalize that they're going to catch you off guard. Normalize that you're going to not know what to do. Normalize that you're going to have low energy and not know how to fuel the action to turn it around. Greet the feeling. Greet what it's telling you. Greet that signal. And then wake up and do it again. Learn. Do it again. You're not going to stay in the shade all day. Remember, the sun will come through the room again. Allow the shade to leave you, allow the sun to come. And I'll leave you with this one other idea. 
I think part of what fuels this worry, this concept of feeling stuck is the fear around what that might say about us, the fear of my ability to fall short, the fear of the things that I don't know. And that's the most unexplicable one. But I'll tell you what, if you're not failing, you're not trying. You should be pushing your limits. You should be trying things out. And, and, and for goodness sakes, do not take fear so seriously. It's just there as a roadmap. It's there as a white flag saying, you got to take a look at this. Be excited when your emotion is speaking up and telling you something. Because the other side of this coin is you not feeling anything at all. And that is the danger zone. Don't take fear so seriously. Normalize, greet, repeat. We'll get with you this week. Thanks for hanging with us and for being a part of our world. Be sure to head over to our website, smallthingsincommon.com and subscribe. But don't worry, we're not going to flood your inbox. We just want to keep you up to date with new episode releases and fun perks for being loyal listeners. Okay, bye.